hello everybody in today's class uh, we are going to learn about the pin configuration of 8086 8086 is an uh, 40 pin ic uh, you have pins on uh, both these uh, sides on the on the uh, lengthier sides so this is how an 8086 uh, pin looks like uh, now on pin number 1 and pin number 20 uh, we give ground and pin number 40 is, pro is to provide the uh, 5 volt power supply to the IC to power the 8086. Now if you uh, see the these arrows here uh, wherever in, uh, a double headed arrow is shown that means uh, it's an, a bidirectional pin data can go into the pin and come out of the pin and wherever there is a uh, single ended arrows it means either like in this case 18 and 19 uh, input is given given into this uh, 86 and uh, here uh, for example uh, 28 and 29 pins uh, you have uh, output coming from 8086 okay so uh, this 8086 uh, the IC can work in two modes essentially uh, one is known as the min mode and one is known as the max mode so if you see pin number 33 uh, it is written min stroke max bar okay that means whenever we give uh, a, a 5 volt supply out here okay into pin number 33 it is going to work in min mode and whenever we are going to ground this pin number 33 it is going to work in max mode okay so what is min man uh, min mode and max mode in min mode the 8086 works as an, an a single processor uh, whereas in max mode uh, it is an uh, when we want to work with more than one processors so uh, it is a combination of many processors so there will be uh, a third party i see which would be uh, controlling all these uh, operations of 8086 and synchronizing the operations with other ICs also right so whereas in uh, uh, 80 uh, in the min mode it, it is works as an, a standalone processor okay uh, so we are uh, we are in this particular course we are going to learn uh, more about only the min operation right so uh, what I uh, the first few slides are going to be on common signals uh, common signals means those signals which are common in the min and max modes okay there are uh, so all these pins like from 1 to 20 they are common for min and man, uh, max mode similarly from 40 to uh, 32 it is common for min and max modes and also this last three 21 22 23 are also common for uh, min mode and max mode uh, whereas from 31 to 24 for the min uh, minimum mode of operation this uh, hold hold acknowledgement right and these things are applicable okay and whereas for the maximum mode uh, whatever is written in the bracket out here uh, these are going to be uh, applicable for the maximum mode okay so now first we are going to uh, uh, discuss about the common signals okay uh, so the first one is uh, like uh, we know it 8086 uh, it is a uh, 16 bit processor right so if it can also handle 8 bit it can also handle uh, 16 bit and uh, whenever required only 8 bit operation also can be handled by 8086 otherwise whenever required even 16 bit operation can be uh, handled so if you see these pins uh, starting from d0 to uh, d14 and then d15 so these are the 16 uh, pins so these 16 pins will be used to transfer the data to the memory or to receive the data from the memory or to transfer the data into an input output port or from the receiving the data from input output port so these are the 16 pins they are known as the data lines okay so they are all uh, bi-directional so it can uh, transmit data to the memory or receive uh, data from the memory similarly uh, transmit or receive data from the input output ports these the, there is no separate address lines in 8086 the same data lines are multiplexed uh, and used for uh, addressing also uh, that means whenever i want to uh, address a memory i am going to first place uh, the address in uh, 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 the the address is like it can uh, 8086 can address up to 1 megabit of uh, information right so 20 lines are required so these 16 lines will carry the uh, first 16 bits of the address lines okay uh, and and then once the address is placed here during that time oh no, only the memory is being uh, accessed okay and then subsequently uh, there you know it will be demultiplexed and th those address uh, whatever you know, was placed here will be saved in a latch and then in the next clock
block the same lines will be used for transferring of the data also right so these lines are uh, are multiplexed with the data okay these pins okay these pins will be used for in one clock cycle it will be used in the first clock cycle it will be the address will be placed there and and then it will be latched it will be latched so that that data needs to be preserved because even when the data operation uh, is being done the address uh, lines uh, requires to be preserved and those particular memory location uh, no, requires to be powered right so uh, so that that address is preserved through a latch that we will see uh, today itself in this class how it is happening right so okay so the, those are uh, that's why it has been multiplexed and now you require uh, four more lines okay so these are the four more additional pins which are going to give me the uh, addition, additional uh, four bits for the address because address requires uh, 20 lines whereas the data requires only 16 so these are the four uh, additional uh, pins that will that are used to place the uh, higher bits of the uh, memory from 16 to 19 right okay now whenever uh, these uh, whenever the address is being placed so all the pins uh, from uh, 2 to uh, uh, 20 and 38 to 35 will carry all the uh, address 20 bit address okay uh, and whenever the data transfer is happening from between the memory and the microprocessor right then these lines will become free right these these four lines because only 16 lines rest of these memory uh, pins from uh, 2 to uh, 16 and then 38 to 35 uh, uh, will be uh, uh, no no only from uh, 2 to uh, uh, 16 uh, and then 39 okay these will the pins which will carry the data whereas because it's only 16 bit data whereas these four pins they don't have any purpose so during this operation when the data is being transferred these pins will carry the status okay this is again if you see th since it, this is all uh, output pins okay so there's no input coming through these pins okay either during the address uh, mode uh, the address bits will be placed here the higher address bits will be placed here uh, or when data transfer is being carried out during that uh, time the status will be placed here so there are uh, four uh, status flags s3 s4 s5 and uh, s6 okay so uh, s3 and s4 in combination uh, will uh, tell okay which is the uh, the code the, the particular code and or the particular instruction which is uh, being executed it is in it, it is in which uh, uh, segment okay so zero zero stands for extra segment zero one uh, stands for stack one zero st uh, stands for code segment code data segment and one one stands for data segment so these these two bits together okay when the data transfer is uh, being uh, done so this will indicate uh, which is the uh, segment okay uh, oh, no, in which this instruction is being uh, and carried out so this indicates those two uh, st uh, segments okay and uh, uh, s5 uh, indicates okay the uh, interrupt flag we know one of the flags is uh, interrupt and uh, we can uh, set that flag to one or zero by we have that uh, sti and clear uh, uh, clear and set uh, instructions where we can uh, set the uh, flag of the uh, we can set the uh, interrupt flag right so once that interrupt flag is set only then and the uh, external interrupts and uh, will be enabled for this 8086 if the interrupt is zero uh, even if there is external uh, interrupts okay those interrupts will not be serviced by 8086 okay so now to give to the external uh, controller that what is the status of the interrupt uh, flag so this uh, s5 will be uh, used okay and uh, s6 is always uh, zero so that is not used so that is always uh, zero okay uh, so the next uh, uh, pin which we are going to uh, see is bhe dash this is known as uh, bus high enable okay uh, so it is a uh, there is a bar also given here that means whenever bhe is zero that means i am going to uh, the operation corresponds to an uh, 16 bit uh, data right so uh, suppose i am placing an uh, address as an uh, 10000 okay because it is 20 bit line so uh, hexadecimal 5 bits are required so le let me uh, just call it as an uh, 10000 so if bhe is one out here 
okay that means it is bus high is not uh, enabled okay because it is if it is one here that means if i am going to either fetch the data from 10000 uh, a single byte or i am going to write one data into that memory location it could be either read or write operation right but whereas if bhe signal is zero that means now it is going to be a uh, word operation that means in in whenever if it's a write operation then the data is going to a 16 bit data is going to be written into memory location 10000 and 10001 okay as a pair and similarly if this is low and if it is a read operation then a 16 bit data will be uh, read from memory location 10000 and 10001 together as a uh, word so this is used in conjunction with the address lines to indicate whatever address we have placed that is corresponding to a single byte or or a word so this is used in conjunction with this so when we see the memory organization block diagram so we'll see how this signal is used to select a word or a byte okay so this is uh, another very important signal which comes out from 8086 okay uh, so the next uh, uh, signal common signal is uh, min max uh, uh, that that we know that is used to uh, select the mode of operation okay uh, then you have uh, something known as an uh, read okay uh, read is whenever we are going to uh, the microprocessor is uh, going to uh, read an operation uh, from the memory okay that means it the memory is going to provide the data to the microprocessor uh, to, to the microprocessor so you need to tell the memory okay now i am going to read so that this signal is given to the memory to tell that okay it's a read operation now okay so the memory accordingly now uh, will uh, activate the memory cell and uh, based on the address which we have placed here and it will an uh, operate and sense amplifier and it will give the information okay uh, the next is if you see is a uh, test okay uh, test is like uh, uh, suppose you are writing an instruction and then uh, you can write a wait instruction in your program okay what does a uh, when once you write a wait instruction then it will uh, wait the the program will come to a pause okay it will not execute the next instruction till some signal a signal a low signal comes into the uh, test input okay for example you are running an, an a pump motor uh, you want to fill a tank okay so uh, the instruction you have given is an a switch on the pump so you have sent some data into an output port okay say 1111 data which is running a pump now now the pump has started running so you want the pump to stop uh, as then you write and wait instruction okay so the next instruction after the wait will be stop the pump so you are not going to stop the pump now you have put a wait in between okay so it will keep waiting it okay so what happens is as and when uh, say suppose we have put a sensor when the water level uh, reaches the brim of the tank when the tank is full uh, it is going to send a low signal here so that low signal would come here and and the test uh, once the uh, test signal is received here test bar signal that is the low signal is received here okay then the the wait instruction will uh, stop and then it will go to the next instruction okay so the ne next instruction could be like stop the motor okay so these are the uh, I have just given one example but essentially uh, in a program we can write a command which is known as wait if you uh, do that the next instruction will not be executed and 8086 will uh, pause okay with whatever output it is it will just uh, pause that next instruction will not be done and to continue with the next instruction you need to give a signal of low in the test pin okay so that is the purpose of the uh, test okay the next one is uh, ready so uh, uh, many a times you know when we have a uh, slow uh, like the 8086 can normally be operated at 5 megahertz clock okay that means in every clock pulse you have uh, 200 nanosecond difference right so sometimes uh, you might connect an, an a memory device or input output device which is in a slower in an uh, operation right so uh, the, the, the it's a slow device probably maybe it could be and then a, uh, a motor and a, which once you give a signal it will take some time for it because of the inertia to move to the next position right so in those cases uh, okay you, you can have an a ready signal coming from the uh, memory or the input 
device that whatever a uh, task has been uh, given to me i have completed that okay so on completion of the uh, data transfer or whatever data we have provided so a ready signal so you can uh, have a program where the next instruction is uh, uh, executed only once the ready signal is got from the uh, in output device or from the memory okay so that is the purpose of the uh, ready signal uh, and then uh, this is the min max pins which we have already discussed min and max okay we can what we can do with that so uh, it is an uh, max is active low and min is high so we generally when we are operating in an uh, standalone mode so we need to give an uh, 5 volt supply to the uh, min pin here only then it will work as a uh, sta standalone mode so because min you see it is not bar out here max is bar so whenever we want to operate in min we need to give a 5 volt supply at pin number 33 right okay uh, now let let's see some of the these these pin these pins okay these functions are specific to min mode so that's why it's written min mode signals out here okay let's see each one of them uh, at any given so this is uh, data transmit or uh, receive okay so uh, uh, if it is one that means we are going to tell the memory that uh, the microprocessor is going to transmit some data so so the memory will be ready for uh, receiving the data right so similarly when i'm uh, uh, okay so the data bus okay the data bus will be connected to the memory through a bidirectional buffer so the transmit buffer will be enabled in this case okay uh, and this is uh, receive uh, when 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 it is slow that means the microprocessor is going to uh, receive data so the, the it keeps the uh, memory ready it tells the memory okay now you can uh, you are in the uh, transmit mode so the memory this is uh, pertaining to the memory uh, to the microprocessor not with the memory data transmit means 8086 is going to transmit the data uh, and if, if this this pin goes low that means 8086 is going to receive the data okay uh, now the next pin is uh, this is known as data enable pin okay data enable pin is uh, these two works you know, closely related to each other data enable pin means we know these pins they are uh, multiplexed okay these pins are the address and the data are multiplexed with each other right so uh, initially when the address is being placed on these pins okay this will be high okay so that the data is disabled okay this is active low there is a bar here so whenever we are uh, putting using these pins for uh, address line okay as address lines so this pin will be uh, high and whenever these lines we are going to use for uh, data transfer this pin will go low so that is why it is known as data enable pin okay so whenever this goes low so it is like it will take for any data operation move we will see that you know the timing diagram also whenever we are trans uh, 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 writing a data into the memory or or we are receiving a data from the memory it requires a uh, few clock cycles generally four clock cycles so in the first clock cycle the address is placed okay on the address bus and then this will be high in that state and in the next clock cycle that address will be latched and and then the data will be transferred now and in that time and and when the data is being transferred the signal will go low here okay so that is the purpose of the uh, pin number 26 which is known as uh, uh, data enable okay and then you you have something known as uh, uh, address latch enable okay uh, this is again once you place the address on the address uh, bar okay after that you give an address latch small pulse to the external circuit okay and that pulse is given to a latch so now the address will be uh, latched okay and then the and the next clock cycle uh, this uh, address lines data will be placed in these address lines but still you will require the address lines right because you have once you have selected the memory one particular uh, memory cell uh, or uh, no, in the in the from the memory uh, that cell uh, requires to be selected even when the while the data is being transferred right so that's why you need to keep the address lines in a, uh, safely somewhere so this there is a latch out here so this latch will uh, preserve that address lines and it will continue the selection of that particular address lines till the data transfer is also completed right and and in the next cycle when the next address is uh, uh, put in the uh, uh, onto these pins again the address address latch will go on for some time and enable the latch to capture the next address so that is the reason uh, it is known as address latch enable 
right okay and then uh, like we we are we are using the same address lines and the same data lines either to address the uh, input output ports or the memory also right so it is not that uh, one uh, mb of uh, uh, memory uh, is some part of that we need to allocate to io it's not so you can have one full uh, one mb of memory over and above that you can use the same address lines uh, to address io ports also okay now how to distinguish whether it is a memory operation or an io operation so this is the pin which will give like suppose i give and move operation move ax within square bracket say 5000 or 1 so obviously it is indicating that from memory location 5000 one that data is needs to be uh, brought into ax okay so that in that case okay the 5000 uh, the address corresponding to 5000 will be placed on the address bus and the memory uh, uh, this pin number 28 will be high again i can have the same 5000 as an input i will put port also right so uh, when i put input output only thing difference out here is input output port you can you cannot have 1 mb you can have only 2 to the power of 16 okay so the only the 16 address lines will be used for the uh, address lines so in that case i can uh, i can write an instruction uh, in uh, to, uh, 5000 uh, 5000 okay right now the 5000 doesn't cut now because i have written not move instruction but <coughs> excuse me i have written in instruction instead of move i have written an in instruction that means uh, the uh, the data is going to be taken from a port okay so uh, but the address is like in the move also you gave 5000 in the input output also now in the in instruction also I am giving 5000 where but what happens is the input I put this pin at pin number 28 the signal will be low and hence it will not it will not the, the uh, hardware will not select the memory but it will select the input output port inst instead of the memory so this is again one uh, pin which will enable us to connect either to a memory or an input output port so just uh, remember that the same address can be for a memory or it could be for an uh, uh, input output port also it only depends you uh, know uh, uh, whether you are writing an uh, in out instruction for input output or or a move uh, uh, out an uh, instruction for a memory operation right accordingly this pin so once you write an instruction these signals will come automatically from 8086 you don't have to write any instructions to get uh, any signals in these pins okay your instruction itself uh, the 8086 once it decodes those instructions it will accordingly uh, give the signals in these pins okay uh, so the next one is write okay uh, write is whenever we want to write an uh, information into an input output port or into a memory location this signal has to be uh, low so there is one an, uh, read signal and there is has to be a, a write also so the memory is to be told whether uh, you know whether we are going to read an information from the memory or or we are going to write and information into the memory so these read and write signals are corresponding to those okay this is known as interrupt acknowledgement okay so uh, 8086 has a uh, this uh, interrupt acknowledgement and uh, there is an interrupt pin available here so uh, whenever there are uh, different ports and it could be your uh, uh, input output ports whenever they want to communicate with 8086 they will send an uh, interrupt uh, signal to the 8086 okay uh, that is through these pins okay nmi and ntr so once those signals are received here if 8086 uh, what it will the, it, it cannot happen that it is doing some instructions and halfway through it will just uh, stop it it will complete the instruction which it is, is being doing okay so and then once it uh, uh, completes that instruction um, the uh, present ip address okay uh, because after the it services that uh, interrupt signal it has to co come back and do the program which it was doing earlier right so uh, once it, it, you get an interrupt uh, signal uh, it completes that uh, particular instruction which it is doing it and then push this uh, the IP content into the stack register okay so that it can come back later on and then it will service the uh, and then it will give an interrupt acknowledgement to the interrupt uh, controller uh, to the device which is interrupting it okay so that it knows okay now okay now I am ready to take on uh, your service request then the service the whatever is the uh, interrupt okay what kind of service is required that is uh, communicated to 8086 so this is known as the interrupt acknowledgement signal okay 
uh, and then you have a uh, hold signals uh, uh, hold signal is like you know, uh, when a, a, there will be a bus controller also because uh, what are the, these address lines and data bus uh, the, it's a, it's a uh, wires which is interconnecting your 8086 with input output ports with the memory uh, and maybe few other devices also right uh, suppose I initially have written a program and I want to dump that program into the uh, memory location right uh, and and since I have written a program and uh, I using an uh, MassM or a TASM uh, compiler when I'm dumping it into the memory location there's no role for 8086 uh, there uh, during that operation right and I uh, it, it can be standby mode uh, once I dump the memory and then it can start executing taking data from the memory so during that operation uh, I can tell uh, hold uh, no, to 8086 okay that will be done by the uh, bus controller once it tells hold to the 8086 uh, all these pins uh, from inside will go in high impedance state okay so the all these uh, data lines and the address lines they are uh, freed from 8086 control so all those wires now the uh, the whatever the compiler can uh, have direct access to your memory and uh, put the data into the uh, uh, memory okay so that in that, that case 8086 you know, uh, uh, relieves the uh, bus okay well, bus is nothing but a set of wires which, which is going to connect these pins with various other uh, devices like memory or ports and things like that okay so uh, that is known as a uh, hold okay uh, this is hold this is then uh, external uh, circuit and uh, will uh, initially give an hold signal and request 8086 okay you please uh, relieve the buses and once the 8086 sales uh, okay now i am uh, relieving it so it will uh, relieve the bus control okay uh, so uh, once it is now uh, even when you have to transfer uh, a bulk data from memory to memory okay uh, that also in that case also you uh, know uh, 8086 doesn't have a role so so th in those cases also the bus controller can uh, di directly transfer data so 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 b because before transferring this data uh, once it places an uh, hold signal 8086 gives an hold acknowledgement signal that means okay now i am going to uh, relieve my uh, pins from the data bus you can do whatever you want with the bus but, you know, okay so that is how it gives an uh, hold acknowledgement signal out here right now uh, okay after hold okay there are three uh, status signals out here okay these status signals are also uh, 8086 uh, tells the its status uh, to the uh, rest of the uh, controllers and uh, because you are not working in isolation so there will be uh, other devices and uh, which will be monitoring the performance of 8086 like bus controllers uh, timing generators and these things so those ICs so it will give the status okay uh, like 000 it means an uh, interrupt acknowledgement 001 means it's reading something from the input output port uh, 010 means an, uh, it's writing some information into the input output port okay so these are various uh, codes so so th these are these three bits they just indicate the uh, status of the 8086 to the external controllers okay coming next to the next uh, pins okay uh, these are again like we know um, 8086 is known as a pipeline architecture why it's known as a pipeline ar architecture is there are a few uh, queue registers available uh, in the processor when one instruction is being uh, executed okay the next instruction is brought and kept into the queue and uh, the decoding of those instructions and keeps happening in the background okay so that the no time is lost okay so you can refer to the uh, first or second lecture in which this is explained uh, slightly in a better manner so in the queue register essentially I have the uh, uh, next uh, opcode of the next uh, uh, instruction which requires to be executed so that comes into the uh, queue registers and in the queue registers it is decoded so there is a decoder uh, which will tell which is which will tell okay what is the exact uh, uh, operation which arithmetic or logical operation which requires to be done so uh, these two uh, uh, no, pins they indicate what is the status of the queue register if 0 0 means uh, uh, there is nothing happening in the queue register 0 1 means the first uh, um, uh, op code is being uh, like any op code will have an op code and then it will have some data right so there are uh, so there are actually since op card can go as long as an uh, six uh, bytes you will have six registers in the queue right so uh, zero one indicates that the, the first part of the uh, op code is being uh, decoded 
okay uh, like if it is an uh, first part of the first byte of the opcode generally gives the instructions like move in okay uh, we know that right so that is add subtraction so that that part is being executed so 0 1 means uh, that part is being decoded right and uh, 1 0 means it, it the, the queue is empty okay and 1 1 means and uh, you have um, after the uh, op code you have the uh, like the, you have sometimes just move a b uh, and then you have the destination right uh, the the source uh, data right similarly uh, if you have an uh, uh, add instruction add and then you have some uh, source data or immediate data so if that the second part of the op instruction is being uh, decoded then the status will be uh, one one so essentially these two will uh, indicate what, what to the external uh, controllers and what is the status of the uh, queue registers okay so that is what is uh, uh, these two pins indicate okay uh, and then uh, you have uh, two more uh, pins here uh, okay which are uh, so now th these uh, last okay l uh, i just missed out okay uh, after the hold signals okay this uh, 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 hold and hold acknowledgement were in the minimum mode uh, these three pins are for the uh, maximum mode signals right in the minimum mode uh, these pins these pins have a different function right in the minimum mode if i go back here in the minimum mode it has a uh, read write memory and a uh, data enable address latch animal these are the functions which are uh, there in the minimum mode now we are talking about maximum mode in the maximum mode the same pins have a different functions so here these are the status function uh, these are the status ones these are the queue uh, st queue status and, and this is known as the in the maximum mode again right it is known as bus request or bus grant so now we are talking about max mode when there is one central uh, uh, controller and there are several processors so you are uh, working in an in a complex environment in in these cases okay whenever uh, the, uh, these two pins are used by the uh, uh, central controller to tell the AT86 uh, please uh, relieve the uh, address bus and the data bus okay because somebody else is going to use the same data bus okay uh, bus is again I told it is only a, a set of wires which are going to connect so the the same address lines will be connected to some other controllers also to the some other memory also because the same memory can be as uh, accessed by this uh, processor or by some other uh, processor also right so we are working in a mixed mode of operation so uh, as and when the here we want this processor to uh, uh, get it uh, itself isolated from the address bar and the data bar so this signal uh, uh, address bus and the data bus this signal is given to the 8086 okay so this is uh, requesting asking for okay the uh, okay bus request that means some other processor wants to use the bus and and this also acknowledges okay grant okay that also is acknowledged through the same uh, pins okay uh, so this is lock okay this is lock means now it, it whenever this processor like my uh, 8086 wants to use these data lines it, uh, it will send a log signal telling the other processors or okay, not to use the data processors because i am going to send some data now in the uh, data buses okay so as long as this this is an uh, it is actually lock bar so as long as this goes low out here okay so this data lines uh, this 8086 will place the data now my 8086 is going to place the data in these data lines and other microprocessors will not uh, place any other data into the, those lines okay so this takes control of, uh, over the data lines okay so it gets locked so the data line gets locked with this microprocessor so this is known as the uh, lock pin out here all right so this we have seen lock we have seen so that's all uh, so in the next class uh, i'm going to uh, discuss about the uh, uh, hardware implementation a memory organization where the function of these uh, pins will be uh, bhe uh, and the address lines and the data lines and, uh, and memory input i put the, these pins okay these all will be uh, further uh, clear okay uh, i'll uh, also put some examples also and then we will uh, make the things very very uh, clear in the next class okay thanks a lot